This is chapter four, lesson four, linear functions. So graph a function. Sometimes functions are written using two variables. One variable, usually blank, represents the blank and the other, usually blank, represents the blank. In that first blank, you're going to write x represents the domain and the other, usually y, represents the range. Like equations, functions can be represented in words, in a table, with a graph, and as ordered pairs. The graph of a function is the set of ordered pairs consisting of an input and the corresponding output. So let's look at an example. The example I have says, the school store sells book covers for $2 each and notebooks for $1. Tony has $5 to spend. The function y equals 5 minus 2x represents the number of book covers x and notebooks y she can buy. Graph the function. Interpret the points graphed. So step one is I choose values for x and substitute them in the function to find y. So I've chosen 0, 1, 2, and 3. So I plug them into my function. Five minus two times zero gives me five. One, for one, I get five minus two, which gives me three. Five minus four gives me one, and five minus six gives me negative one. Step two is graph the ordered pairs x comma y. She cannot buy negative amounts, so she can buy zero covers and five notebooks, one cover and three notebooks, or two covers and one notebook. So there is one try it problem on this page. Go ahead, pause the video, try out the try it problem, and when you're done, we will go over the answers together. Now that you've tried the try it problem on your own, let's go over the answers together. Letter A says the farmer's market sells apples for $2 per pound and oranges for $1 per pound. Marjorie has $10 to spend. The function y equals 10 minus 2x represents the number of apples x and oranges y Marjorie can purchase. Graph the function and interpret the points graphed. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a couple of points. I'm going to make a table down here. So I'm going to say 0, 1, 2, 3. Stop there. Okay. I'm going to plug these into my function. So again, my function is y equals 10 minus 2x. And I'll get my y. So 10 minus 0 is 10. 10 minus 2 gives me 8. 10 minus 4 gives me 6. 10 minus 6 gives me 4. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and plot those points. So my first point is 0, 10. My second is 1, 8. Then I have 2, 6. And then three, four, okay? And I could keep going down. So if I graph these on a line, they are gonna be a straight line. So I get that. Okay. So Marjorie can purchase ten pounds 
of oranges. Six pounds of oranges and two pounds of apples. Four pounds of oranges and three pounds of apples. Okay, so anything along those lines would be considered your answer. The second example I have is graph y equals x plus two. Okay, so step one is make a function table, which I've done over here. Select any four values for the domain x, substitute these values for x to find the value of y, and write the corresponding ordered pairs. So for 0, 1, 2, and 3 were the numbers that I chose. I plug them into my table. I got y values of 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then my x, comma, y coordinates are also shown. Step 2, graph each ordered pair. Draw a line that passes through each point. So here's my points, they were graphed on my line, we drew a line through. So the line is the complete graph of the function. The ordered pair corresponding to any point on the line is a solution of the equation y equals x plus 2. Okay. So you can check for any of these points to make sure it works. So we're going to pick the point negative 2, 0, which does fall on the line. y equals x plus 2. 0 for y, negative 2 for x, negative 2 plus 2 gives me 0, so 0 does equal 0, so it is a solution. Okay. There are two try-it problems on this page. I want you to go ahead, pause the video, try it out, and when you're done, we will go over the answers together. Now that you've paused the video and you've gone over, you've tried out the try-it problems, let's go over them together. Letter B says y equals x minus 5. So I have my chart here. So here's my x values. I'm going to pick 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay. My function is x minus 5. So I just plug in my values for x and I solve for y. Just so I remember. I'm going to plug in 0. So 0 minus 5 gives me negative 5. 1 minus 5 gives me negative 4. 2 minus 5 gives me negative 3. 3 minus 5 gives me negative 2. And I could keep going, okay? Then I'm going to go ahead and plug these, those, into my graph. Okay? So I first have 0, negative 5. So I go to 0 and go down to negative 5. 1, 2, 4. There's negative 5 right there. I go over 1, down to negative 4, over 1, negative 3, over 1, negative 2. Okay, I can keep going. I'm going to go ahead and connect these. They form a straight line. Okay. So there is my graph. For letter C, I have y equals negative 2x. I'm going to create my table. I'm going to pick four points. Here's my function. So I'm going to plug in 0 for x. So negative 2 times 0 gives me 0. Negative 2 times 1 gives me negative 2. Negative 2 times 2 gives me negative 4. And negative 2 times 3 gives me negative 6. Now that I have those points, I'm going to go ahead and plug them into my graph. So the first one I have is 0, 0. Then I have 1, negative 2. Then I have 2, negative 4. Okay. 
I could keep going, but I'm gonna run out of room. So I'm gonna go ahead and graph my line. Okay. So there's my line of y equals negative two x. Okay. Linear functions as continued continued on the next two pages. So representing functions, as we said before, uh, the value of y is one less than the corresponding value of x. According to this equation, y equals x minus one, that's what the words say. So again, I can show linear functions in words with an equation in a table with ordered pairs or with graphs. So this is an example of all of those. So I have y equals x minus one. So here it is in words, the equation, there's my table ordered pairs, and an actual graph. So, a blank blank, in those two blanks you're going to write linear function. So a linear function is a function in which the graph of the solutions form a straight line. So linear function forms a straight line. Therefore, an equation of the form y equals mx plus b is a linear function. A function can be considered continuous or discrete. Blank, blank, in those two blanks, you're going to write continuous data. Okay, so continuous data can take on any value. So there is no space between data values for a given domain. Blank, blank, in those two blanks, you're going to write discrete data. So discrete data have space between possible data values. Graphs of continuous data are represented by solid lines and graphs of discrete data are represented by dots. Okay, so here are some examples of continuous versus discrete data. So for continuous data, the number of ounces in a glass, so it doesn't change, something's continuous. Discrete data is number of glasses in a cupboard. You could have different numbers of glasses in a cupboard. You know, um, in my cupboard, I could have four glasses in Ron's cupboard, he could have three glasses. In Hermione's cupboard, she could have 12 glasses, so it's discrete, it's not the same, okay? There's nothing that holds it together. Continuous data, the weight of each chocolate chip. So a chocolate chip's just gonna be the same weight regardless of what it is, it's a chocolate chip, okay? Discrete data, number of chocolate chips in a bag, that can change it's not always guaranteed to be the same, okay? You can determine if data that model real world situations are discrete or continuous by considering whether all numbers are reasonable as part of the domain. Okay, so here are some examples. So each person that enters a store receives a coupon for $5 off his or her entire purchase. Number three says write a function to represent the total value of the coupons given out. So we're going to say let y represent the total value of the coupons and x represent the number of people. Okay. The function, so y is the total value, right? They're $5 off and each person is given one. So y equals 5 times x. Okay. Number four says make a function table to find the total value of the coupons given out by 5, 10, 15, and 20 customers. Okay, so here's my table. 5, 10, 15, 20 are my x values. I plug them into my function of 5x. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 10 is 50. 5 times 15 is 75. And 5 times 20 is 100. So I create these new y values. Number five 
says graph the function. Is the function continuous or discrete? Explain. Okay, so I've go, gone ahead and graphed my ordered pairs. I can use the ordered pairs from the function table to graph the function. There can only be a whole number amount of customers because people can't be partial, like you can't have half of a human. The function is discrete, so the points are not connected. Okay. So again, we said discrete data has spaces between possible data values. Okay, so it's just going to be the dots. I'm not going to actually connect the lines. So there's a try it problem out on this page, D, E, and F. It's all contained with win one. So go ahead, pause the video, try it out, and when you are done, we will go over the answers together. Now that you've had a chance to go over the answers, let's look at them together. Letter D says write a function to represent the total cost of any number of pounds of nuts. Okay. So let's say you're actually missing some information here. So I'm going to go ahead and give you that information. So your function D is going to be C equals 5.95 P. Okay, so this is represented by peanuts and cashews, or the total cost. So your peanuts are $5.95 a pound. Okay, so here's my peanuts pound of peanuts is $5.95, cost is C. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and complete the ta table below to find the total cost of one, two, three, four, or five pounds of nuts. So P, 5.95P, and that's my C value. So we said one, two, three, four, five, so I have 595 times 1, 595 times 2, 595 times 3, 595 times 4, and 595 times 5. Okay, when I multiply each of these, first one gives me 595, second gives me 1190, the third gives me 1785, Fourth gives me 2380, and the fifth gives me 2975. Okay. Letter F asks me to graph the function and say whether it's continuous or discrete, and then explain my reasoning. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and graph my, fun graph my function. So pounds purchased. And then this is my total cost. Okay, so when I go ahead and graph this, I have one, 595, it's about there, two, 1190, about there, three, 1785, about there, Four twenty-three eighty. Uh, about there. Five is twenty-nine seventy-five. About there. This one should be over a little bit. Should be about there. See how that? Okay. Okay. So this situation is continuous because you don't have to buy the nuts in whole number increments. Okay, so there can be differences between, I could buy a half a pound, I could buy a quarter pound of nuts, I don't have to buy. 
So this is continuous. Because you don't have to buy whole pounds of nuts. You can buy any amount. Okay. So that is the reason why it's continuous. It doesn't matter how much you buy. you'll still always have a price. Okay, and that is the end of lesson four.